Sean Parker is the co-founder of Napster, which was a popular digital audio file distribution company. At the peak of Napster in 2001, it had 60 million active users. Interestingly, Napster did not make Sean Parker rich. It was Facebook that made him a billionaire. And today, according to Forbes, his net worth is $2.8 billion. In this video, we will learn how Sean Parker from a simple boy became a billionaire at a very young age. When he was seven years old, his father taught him to code on an Atari 800. The young hacker's antics, however, landed him in trouble when one day he hacked into the computer network of a Fortune 500 company but didn't log out. The FBI tracked the young Parker and arrested him. The CIA even tried to recruit him. After Parker had graduated, Fanning told him he wanted to start a peer-to-peer file-sharing service called Napster. At its peak, Napster had 80 million users, many of whom were college students. In 2001, U.S. courts issued an injunction forcing Napster to shut down its file-sharing network. Parker flew to Manhattan in the spring of 2004 and met Zuckerberg and his co-founders. Unfortunately, in 2005, Parker had a run-in with law enforcement which caused jitters among Facebook's investors. In 2006, Parker partnered with Peter Thiel at his venture capital fund, Founders Fund. Later, he invested in Spotify, which shows how much he believes in music and tech. He did not lose hope, he waited for the right opportunity, and once he found it, he went for it. We at Business Chronicles tell the stories of extraordinarily successful people. Please subscribe to our channel to help us in making more videos. Sean Parker was born on December 3, 1979 in Herndon, Virginia. His father was Bruce Parker, an oceanographer who headed the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. His mother was Diane Parker, a TV advertising broker. He had two sisters, Courtney and Kimberly. As a child, Sean Parker was sickly and his asthma landed him in hospital a couple of times. He also had chronic allergies, including a nut allergy that forces him to carry an EpiPen wherever he goes. Parker started reading when he was young and became a voracious reader, devouring shelves of books on various topics. When he was seven years old, his father taught him to code on an Atari 800. By his teens, he was proficient at it. At age 15, he was hacking the websites of Fortune 500 companies and even government agencies from around the world. At age 16, he won a Virginia State Science Fair for developing a web crawler. The young hacker's antics, however, landed him in trouble when one day he hacked into the computer network of a Fortune 500 company but didn't log out. His father took away his keyboard before he could log out, exposing his IP address. The FBI tracked the young Parker and arrested him. Because he was a minor, he was sentenced to community service at a library. Parker went to Oakton High School in Fairfax, Virginia and later transferred to Chantilly High School. There, he convinced his teachers to substitute foreign language classes with computer lessons. As a result, he spent a lot of time coding in the computer lab and trying out online ventures. He interned with a startup known as Freeloader and then UUNet. The CIA even tried to recruit him. He graduated high school in 1998, making over $80,000 a year. This was enough to convince him to forego college and go straight into entrepreneurship. When Parker was 15, he met a 14-year-old programmer named Sean Fanning on an online bulletin board. The two shared a love for intellectual discourse and talked about things such as theoretical physics and programming. They also loved hacking. After Parker had graduated, Fanning told him he wanted to start a peer-to-peer file-sharing service called Napster. Parker heard the idea and immediately loved it. He asked Fanning to involve him and Fanning agreed, making him a co-founder. He put up $50,000 of his own funds to start the company and moved to San Francisco, California. They kick-started Napster in June 1999. Parker was 19 at the time. Napster was a software that people could download online for free and use to share files. Most users used it to share music files in MP3 format. The service became very popular, attracting millions of users in its first year. By the summer of 2000, it had 20 million users, sharing 14,000 songs per minute. At its peak, Napster had 80 million users, many of whom were college students. In fact, students loved Napster so much that some schools banned it to ease network congestion. 
Parker and Fanning enabled the downloading of music files that they themselves did not have copyrights to. Further, they let people download the music for free, impacting CD sales. This angered music industry players, including the Recording Industry Association of America, or RIAA. RIAA filed a lawsuit against Napster alleging copyright infringement. More lawsuits followed, including one by heavy metal band Metallica. In 2001, U.S. courts issued an injunction forcing Napster to shut down its file-sharing network. Afterward, Napster was forced to sell its assets in bankruptcy proceedings. Digital media company Roxio bid $5.3 million for the company's name, trademarks, and technology portfolio. The bankruptcy court approved the acquisition. Dejected and broke, Parker had a difficult couple of months after the fall of Napster. He lived in his friend's houses for some time as he thought about his next move. In 2001, age 22, Parker figured out his next venture. He was browsing online when he realized his address book was going out of date. He wondered whether other people needed help getting their address books up to date and figured he could start a company to do that. He called it Plaxo. Parker launched Plaxo in 2001, scraping together early investments from firms such as Sequoia Capital and other Silicon Valley investors. Once the company launched, Parker used some of what he learned at Napster on network effects to trigger its rapid growth. He engineered Plaxo such that once a user downloaded it, it would mine their address book and then email all their friends, urging them to sign up to it. The software gained plenty of notoriety in the early 2000s, with millions of users getting hit with a Plaxo pitch. Parker's tenure at Plaxo did not last. He fell out with some of his investors because he did not consistently show up at work. The investors organized a boardroom coup and Parker was kicked out of the company. Following the acrimonious exit, Parker once more spent time living with friends. One of these was Jonathan Abrams, the founder of Friendster, an early social media company. In 2002, it became the first social media company to grow its membership to the millions. Parker was an advisor to Abrams for some time, but Friendster came apart when millions of people joined and it could not absorb the traffic. This experience prepared Parker for his next company, the one that would mint him billions. In 2004, Parker learned about a company called The Facebook from a friend's girlfriend. He looked into it and was immediately enamored. He emailed the startup CEO Mark Zuckerberg and they agreed to meet in Manhattan. Parker flew to Manhattan in the spring of 2004 and met Zuckerberg and his co-founders. Some months later, he joined the company as president and even moved into its new rented house in Palo Alto. He was 24 at the time. At the Facebook, Parker played a key role in helping the company simplify its user interface, develop a photo sharing feature, and raise funding. He even brought in his friend Peter Thiel to invest in the company and convince Zuckerberg to drop the from the company's name, leaving it as Facebook. Essentially, Parker transformed Facebook into an actual company. Unfortunately, in 2005, Parker had a run-in with law enforcement which caused jitters among Facebook's investors. They pressured him to resign, which he did. He, however, retained his stock and remained involved with the company, advising on various issues and leading its causes application, which helps users donate to nonprofits. When Facebook went public in 2012, his stake catapulted his fortune to over $2 billion. In 2006, Parker partnered with Peter Thiel at his venture capital fund, Founders Fund. He joined the fund as managing director and ran it until 2014, investing tens of millions of dollars in companies such as Path and Quantcast. It was while working at the Founders Fund that Parker invested in Spotify, a music streaming service founded by Daniel Ek. He invested $15 million in the service in 2010, then joined its board, serving until 2017. Parker helped Spotify raise funding, enter the U.S. market, and partner with companies like Facebook. Parker has backed numerous startups including Airtime in 2010 and Brigade in 2014. Airtime is a live video site run by his Napster friend Fanning, while Brigade is an online forum for civic engagement. Other ventures he has backed include Will Call in 2013, Neura in 2017, OpenFan in 2017, Rev up software in 2018 and buy hard in 2020.
According to Crunchbase, Parker has had two successful exits. The first with ticketing application Will Call, and the second with work management software Asana. Parker has donated millions to cancer research and public health causes. In 2012, he donated $5 million to the Cancer Research Institute and Stand Up to Cancer. In 2014, he committed to give Stanford University $24 million to start the Sean N. Parker Center for Allergy Research. In June 2015, Parker founded the Parker Foundation and gave it $600 million to give to causes in global public health, life sciences, and civic engagement. In 2015, he gave $4.5 million to the Malaria Elimination Initiative at the University of California, San Francisco. He also gave the institution $10 million to build the Sean N. Parker Autoimmune Research Laboratory. In April 2016, the Parker Foundation announced $250 million in grants through the Parker Institute for Cancer Immunotherapy. The funds went to more than 300 scientists in 40 laboratories. Parker has since earned many recognitions for his philanthropy, including being named in Chronicle of Philanthropies, Philanthropy 50 list, and Town & Country's Top 50 Philanthropists. Sean Parker loved music. His friendship with Sean Fanning was fruitful and both created Napster, which was very successful at the start, but later it was bankrupt. He did not lose hope, he waited for the right opportunity, and once he found it, he went for it. For him, it was Facebook. He helped Mark Zuckerberg to get the first investment from Peter Thiel. Later, he invested in Spotify, which shows how much he believes in music and tech. Thank you for watching our video. Subscribe to our channel to watch more videos like this.